Welcome back to another acting analysis and tips for animators and today I'm going to take a look at the Disney Plus movie Mulan. I'll be covering five sequences, but before I do, hi, my name is JD, and if you're new to this channel, I do acting analysis clips like these, I do rake reviews, I do product reviews, I do animation news, I do lectures, and I post my feedback, I do all kinds of things. So feel free to browse around my channel, and if you like anything, you can also subscribe if you want so you don't miss any of my uploads. But now, let's continue, let's go straight to the first sequence. First up, we have this sequence, and I thought this was an interesting moment to change up your lip sync. So imagine you have two characters, right? You got character one, character two, they're talking, but the whole thing is done through this. Now I know squeezing the throat is gonna change the vocal performance of this character or you know whatever character you, that you have. But I thought this is cool, I like this, that we just kind of see this cool costume design as well. And then you can do something where as the character talks, again, this would seem that this character is in trouble, but then you can have potentially a reaction where the character starts smiling or leans in. You would think that it would kind of go back and try to free themselves, but maybe they are so powerful that they would lower the head. You mean everything's a bit more and then lean forward. You can see a tight grip there. So it's a bit of a grip, but not the choking so that the character can't talk. And this sequence here continues with them talking and he does kind of have this a slight smile and you can see how the lids here they kind of tighten watch this goes in nice and subtle a little bit of a widening here as well a little subtle stuff there lowers the head and then starts talking and it's cool because again even here you have a little bit of movement there it almost seems like he's pushing in so i think that could be interesting and it doesn't have to be obviously something like this it could also be well, I don't know, <laughs> right now nothing actually comes to mind, but it could be something where you traditionally have one or two characters talking, but one character is doing something to a character without really interfering with the audio quality, so it doesn't really change you know, the performance that you want it to do, but I think that just adds an extra neat element, and for the character then to behave with a smile, this on your throat and smiling would be different, and then moving forward towards the threat that does this would also add some interesting character stuff on top of delivering the lip sync. Second sequence is this as Mulan comes in, and you can see here she's super busy, right? She comes in, opens the door, and talks. And this is all about secondary action and just business stuff that a character is doing. So it's not a character in an empty scene talking either to no one or another character in an empty scene. What I like about this is that you can use the sets and the props for contrast. So watch this. She comes in, she's busy. She walks around, she talks to all of these while walking, she's busy. She goes around, they're doing their thing, you know, as for contrast, they're very calm, they're just sitting there doing not much except some handing over things. She grabs this and busy, 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 busy. You can see this, busy, 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 not busy at all. They realize, hmm, you gotta tell them something. You can see in the back here, busy, 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 busy. And then they say, okay, listen, <laughs> she knows something's gonna happen. And ready, we found the matchmaker. And even then here, look at that, still busy, still busy. And because of that constant movement, that constant busyness when she does this, ready and matchmaker, you can read that on the lips, and then she goes, oh. It just adds extra weight. Because if she's just standing around and doing nothing, sure, you could do something where the shoulders would slump, the facial expression would change. All of that would also help with contrast and noticing that wheels are turning or she's shocked or something has changed in the thought process and state of mind. But here you can do all this through all of that. You can show busy, happy, all of that stuff and then realize, oh, this is not something I want to bam, stop and hold. And they continue and then here's the contrast. She is locked now, nothing's happening, shocked, oh no. And then they continue with their business as if nothing happened, as if, as if it wasn't a big deal to her. Okay, let's, let's eat and it's gonna be okay. So that's what I always like, when I'm, that's what I also recommend to my students. Maybe put your characters into a scene, into a set, and then use props, because then you can use that, especially secondary action, for contrast, to, in order to, to showcase that something has changed, and you can do that by stopping doing, you know, with whatever business that the character was doing here, just like here. Speaking of contrast, here's something else. As they discuss things and she wants to say something, you can see the reaction of her father and... Fa and there's something where, I mean, this would be a pain to animate every single thing, but I like this. I like that you have a moment where they're talking and this would be a cool setup too for a four character where you don't really have to do any lip sync or maybe they're just listening, but it gives you a bit more framing. Maybe it really frames them and boxes them in or you can have any type of reaction with head turns, but I like that setup and then you can see as she's trying to say something in a nicely lit contrasty profile here, you have the PAM! 
and you have this is moving, that's moving. Obviously they are reacting, but you have all little pieces moving. And there could be something where as he does this, you can see the pause, long pause, and then they start talking. And also you can see that reaction as he starts talking here. But this is something you could potentially stylize and go even further when bah, you want this to be serious, but maybe still with some contrast and, and maybe not contrast, but some funny elements where maybe some of these just keep turning, 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 turning until maybe he will put another hand on it to really stop it. I mean, you can, you can exaggerate, you can escalate that whole situation and do more with it. But this is again, why I like props. You can do something where this could be with more pieces, less pieces, stuff that falls. You could have maybe even in the background, a, little, a bird in a cage that would stop and do something. I mean, there's something where this character action, this, bam, this high contrast moment could affect all kinds of things around in the set with the props. And then you can push that to add a bit more comedy to make this a bit less serious or make this more serious and so on and so on. But I always kind of like that moment with the props. Next up, we have something where it just every little move counts. So if you have your character walk, watch this. She's ready to talk to him. And then she does the stop and a bit of a looking down. She's contemplating, she's waiting. Hmm, should I do this? I'm gonna do this. And this is for anything that you do in your shot. That's what I tell my students all the time. Any type of move, any type of pause, any type of look, is the gaze down, is it up, is the head down or not? Does the character stop or not? All of that tells us something. So as we continue, she has that pause, goes in, and then the other part is this, how she enters. Comes in like this. That to me is very quiet. It's very potentially respectful, depending on what's going on in the scene and who she's meeting. But it's not a thing of, hey, and this whole thing flies around. So look at your entrance. If you have a character enter a scene, this could be through a door, this could be a curtain, this could be, I don't know, whatever you have there. Think about, well, what's the speed of the entrance? You can see how she's kind of turning, putting her leg forward, she's turning with her body to go through that. She doesn't want to move too much. I mean, it's also a lot of respect towards this character. So think about that. How is your character entering the scene? And how is that telling us something about this character? Also I like this it has nothing to do with the entrance, but I like this as they talk. She is in a box. He is in a box. He is in a box. They all have their roles to play. They're all kind of boxed in in the thing, but I kind of like that, how it's framed there. But anyway, that's that. And then here's another one about movement and how you interact with characters. So as they are going up here, this is the whole test, and you just can't do it. You can see they're strained. He goes, ah, oh, I got hesitation, I'll pause in the leg, and then, ah, oh, I can't do this, and bam. Now, after her transformation, she comes in and walks past and goes, blah, 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 and they're all realizing, whoa, she can do this. This is what struck me is, okay, how is she going to pass this character? And you can see that, she turns, she doesn't want to hit him with this, but at the end she still does. And I don't know if that was, there's not enough room, or if it was a bump on purpose, get out of my way, because she's not looking. And maybe that makes it more arrogant, or this is just me reading into something, you know, that is not really the case, it just happened to be something like this. But I like that idea, I like that element. So imagine, this is a competition, and this character basically lost, can't do it. Now this character is passing the other character. Do you want to show it as in, I'm going to use this to push, get out of my way, I'm better than you. Maybe with a little bit of smile, maybe a quick glance, or something where it's not really acknowledging, like a half look over, like not eye, having eye contact, and then head up and being more arrogant. Continuing potentially in this shot, the push, and maybe looking down, like, oh, what are you doing? Or you don't do it at all. And you can you realize that, all right, he lost, she's going to pass. She's going to go, nah, 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 I'm better, but then she doesn't. Then she gives him room, and in this, she doesn't touch it. She really makes sure that she doesn't touch this character, and then follows up with this, where there's no contact, where she knows she's going to win, but she's so concentrated, and it's not a competition to her where she feels superior. She's still respectful to the other person, and then passes by and continues. So this is, to me, just an interesting moment, something for you to think about if you have multiple characters, if one passes another, how is that? Are they holding something? What's the context? Is it a competition or is it not? Is it just entering a store? Is it uh, a sale in a store where they both want to buy the same thing? And are they competing or are they saying, no, you can buy it or you, you can buy it. Whatever the context is, think about how those characters relate. And this could be through props. This is again, why I like props, why you can use this. 
or just body language or looks or you know however you want to uh, construct the scene but to me all of that is important because any of these moves will tell us more about the character so if you do something like this and it's super arrogant or not i know more about this character and then i know more about this character how he reacts to that move he doesn't go and rip the thing apart he doesn't yell at her he just looks at her oh yeah, she can do this now. It's a bit of a disbelief, but also probably a little bit of respect of, oh, okay, she can do this now. There's something going on in, in him. And you can see this too in how he has that little look down, slight frown, and then look over. So to me, all of those elements are triggered by this moment. And now I know more about her and I know more about him. And this is why I like analyzing scenes like this, because you can use elements. Now, it doesn't have to be with props or within a set, even though I like that a lot. It could be also your character, just an empty scene. But every movement counts. Every look, every look you hold or you don't. Can you look and how long? Do you blink? Do you look away? How's your posture? We talked about in a previous FNA about your character pose. Is your character starting off the shot like this or more proud or more arrogant or is more confident or not? All of that matters. All your posing and the timing of the movement, going past someone, using something, looking at someone, all of that tells us something about about your character and the relationship between another character if there are multiple characters in your scene. So I would really pay attention to every single thing that you put into your shot. And speaking about attention, if you want me to pay more attention to you and your shots and make your awesome shots even better, I have workshops and you know the drill, all the information is in the description. Feel free to check it out. You can sign up at any time my workshops are open. And speaking of time, if you're still watching this, as always, thank you so much for your patience and for watching the whole thing till the very end. And if any of this is potentially helpful to you and you feel like, yeah, I don't want to miss more of those uploads. You can subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss any of those uploads. And that is it. I would say thank you again, and I'll see you in my next clip.